Hi, this is Alan from Froggy Style Photos. Um, welcome to part one of what will be a three-part series um, in, in walking through the workflow for what I call the wedding glow effect. It's this beautiful treatment um, that you can apply to your own photos um, and, and, and it's used traditionally in um, wedding photography, but it's applicable to a lot of different things. So let me back out here real quick and just show you what's going on. Um, so this is going to be our starting point. This is going to be it's this beautiful photo of a bride and her groom, or at least what I hope is her groom, and uh, on her on their wedding day. So this is the original out of the camera raw, and the treatment we're going to apply and the final treatment in the end will look like this. So you can see it. We've we've kind of brought the um, the colors and the photo to life, and we have focused the user's visual attention exactly where we want it to go, which is right onto the face of the beautiful bride. Okay, So all of that said, let's get straight into it. I only have 10 minutes to get through this stuff um, because of the uh, YouTube limitations, uh, so, so let's just get started. And in this particular um, series, in part one of this three-part series, we are going to cover um, blemish removal and just some basic portrait retouch, retouching. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing I want to do is I want to preserve the original layer, so I'm going to duplicate it that I can start working with another one. And I do that by clicking Control J on Windows or, or Command J, I believe, on the Macintosh. And um, or alternatively, I could grab this layer and just drag it down to the new layer icon like that. So whatever one works for you. Um, I find the keyboard shortcuts to be pretty quick. So now I'm going to turn off the original so that it just kind of stays out of the way. And I'm going to rename this to Photo Layer. Okay, so remember that as we're talking through some of this stuff, that that's what I'm referencing when I say photo layer. So the first thing I want to do this to this particular image is I want to um, do a color treatment on it, a real basic one, and that's because the colors in this are flat and they come they come out of the camera flat when you, especially when you shoot it in RAW. Um, the color's there; it's just kind of it's it's um, embedded in the image data. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a little saturation to bring some of the skin color back to both of these subjects. And to do that, I'm not going to do it to the photo layer um, directly because that would um, be destructive to that layer. It would be applying something that would be really hard to revert or to uh, remove and extrapolate back out of there. So what I want to do is I want to create a new layer and put the saturation adjustment on that layer and that way if I ever want to take out that adjustment I can just go ahead and do so without impacting other changes I may have made. So in order to do that you come down here and you click the new adjustment layer icon and you go up to hue and saturation and you'll see that that creates a new layer with this hue and saturation and then up here you can see your three sliders for the hue and saturation layers. You have lightness which is uh, think of it like exposure levels Okay, I'm going to turn it back to zero because I don't want to adjust those. And then you have saturation and hue. And I'm not going to touch hue at all. I only want to add red to the photo. So I'm going to start to walk this up to about 15. And you can see as I do it, it's bringing, oh, I think 14 is going to work nicely. You can see that it's bringing color and life back into the photograph. See the difference? They turn off the layer and expose the photo layer, which was the original we started with. Yeah, so it looks pretty darn good already. So that's that's one quick way to uh, make a, a pretty significant adjustment um, to the coloring of the photo. Now the next thing I would want to do is I want to go in and I want to remove any kind of blemishes or wrinkles or or anything like that from my subjects. Um, and, and this particular image, um, fortunately for this beautiful woman, is she doesn't have a whole lot of work that needs to be done. Um, she does have some moles on her neck, you can see one, two, three, four, five maybe, um, that we can touch up and we'll do those so that I can get the concept across, but in general she doesn't need a lot of work. So, but let's go ahead and get rid of the moles at least. Now, if you've seen other um, tutorials that talk about um, retouch work, um, you might, you, you've probably come across at least some um, where the digital artist does all of their retouch uh, work on the photo layer, right? And again, that's destructive to that particular layer. So, so here's here's the analogy. If if I did a hundred steps in in my processing, and I went through and did a hundred different things, all on the same layer, this photo layer, but then at the end of it, decided that step number fifty, whatever I did there, I wanted to get rid of. I wanted to put it back. I can't do that without walking back over all of the steps fifty-one through a hundred. 
I have to get rid of all of those to control Z all the way back to 50, the one I actually want to get rid of. So that's why we do whatever we can not to be destructive to individual layers, but to just keep adding on new layers um, with all the treatments we're doing. And that way we can go in and just cherry pick certain ones out or tweak them or whatever it is we want to do to them. Um, so that said, let's go ahead and get into um, getting rid of these molds. So what I want to do is I want to create my a new blank layer, which, is, which I've done here, and I'm going to call it um, blemish, blemishes, and um, that way I'll know that that's, that's where I made those corrections. And so I'm going to go in just a little bit tighter here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on either the healing brush tool, or you can use a clone stamp tool. And in this case, I'm going to use a clone stamp tool, and I won't get into the nuances of why, but um, just trust me that you could use either. And, and, and from my experience, uh, uh, using the um, clone stamp here is, is going to be a superior tool. So here's how the clone stamp tool, tool works. What it does is you tell it where you want to sample data from, okay, image data. And, and then you take that sample, and you will basically put it over the mole, and you'll brush there. And it'll take it'll take image data from wherever you sampled, and then it'll just go ahead and add and apply it over that on its own layer. One of the things you're definitely going to want to do, I'm going to turn up my brush opacity. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm using a soft brush. And here's your brushes up here. And how you tell if you're using a soft brush is where the hardness slider is. So zero uh, zero through ten. Is considered a really soft brush, and then as you go further this way, it uh, becomes a harder edged brush. Now, what that means is, whoops, back on that, is that you can see here, see 19, it has a really, it, if I were to go this way, that'd be a hard brush, and 19 is a hard brush. See how the edging of it is really stark and sharp? Um, and that's the way that it paints um, onto your canvas. So instead, I want a soft brush like these that have really soft edges and that way it allows um, your treatments to blend more with their surrounding colors. So we're going to use a soft brush. We're going to do that. And that's about the right size. And just a quick um, shortcut uh, note is that the bracket keys um, increase on at least windows, increase and decrease the brush size, which is nice when you're working. Because you want um, a brush size that just barely covers the area you're, you're working with when you're doing clone stamping. So, to select my sample area, I um, hold down the Alt key and I um, left click to tell it. And now when I click over this mole, you'll see um, a cross appear and you can see it right there and that's where it's sampling from and it's pulling data from there and adding it to where my brush circle is. Okay, And then it just covered that mole. Now I'm going to sample here and cover. Sample here and cover. Sample here, and again cover. You can see how that works. Oops, and we're nicely um, getting rid of. Oops, what am I doing here? There is a bug in Photoshop in Windows 7 that occasionally creeps up on me, um, and it didn't there. Okay, so that's um, that's it in a nutshell. Um, if I were to, I'm running out of time here, so I'm just going to wind this down. If I were to do anything additional to this particular um, uh, image at this point for the purposes of this lesson, is I'd probably just bring her arm in a little bit so that it was a little tighter there and didn't have kind of that bulge um, on it. But uh, again, I don't think it's necessary to do here. Um, we're going to go ahead and just move to part two. This image looks pretty good as far as I'm concerned. I'm going to flatten it all this point because I'm happy with everything and now this will be the image that we move and use in part two. That said, I uh, welcome you to start the next uh, series or part in the series and then once we get to the final one you'll have a new, you know, very professional level set of tricks to start using when you um, do your post-processing work with your own images.